guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to unbox and clean a vintage clock. Okay, well hopefully this has made the uh, freight okay. It's not damaged, so we'll just uh, get this opened up. Cool. Oh, well, it looks pretty well packed anyway. All right, and there you have it, one slave clock. So just holding it for the first time, I'm quite surprised how um, heavy that is. And this casing's Bakelite, so we can give that a clean up. I've got a glass front there. The face looks in very good condition, so that's good. Okay, it's got a hinge for mounting to a wall. So I'll do a bit of research on this later, but it's a gents slave clock made in England. And it's got here connect in series with a gents master clock. So working current 0.22 amps, max current 0.27 amp, and min current 0.17 amp. Okay. We'll get this body cleaned up. You can see there's a few little scratches. That looks to be a bit of a mark from wiping up against something, maybe a painted surface. We'll get this Bakelite polished up and cleaned up and we'll just get the back of this unit cleaned up as well. Okay, we'll make a start on cleaning up this old clock. Now, um, what I thought we'll do is we'll just start on the body first. Now the body is made out of a product called Bakelite or Bakelite. Now I'm not too sure on the exact pronunciation of the product, but um, I always refer to it as Bakelite. Um, but I could be wrong there, so don't quote me on that. And it's a, basically a first early form of plastic. Um, so it was patented in 1909 and invented by a person called Leo Bakerland. So it's quite a good product. It was used in early electrical components because it didn't um, conduct electricity. So old insulators, for instance. And I've also got an old Bakerlite telephone here. know when this dates back to but I'd say this is a early 60s phone okay well we're gonna need some cleaning products so we'll go over to my cleaning shelf and see what we can find okay so the product I tend to use for cleaning Bakelite is Brasso um, I find that probably the less abrasive on Bakelite um, but I'm going to stress I'm not an expert at cleaning Bakelite. I'm not an antique dealer or anything. Um, but this is what I use. The other product I'm going to use is this Plast X Meguiar's Plastic Cleaner. Um, it's used for headlights. Um, I tend to just use that to remove marks. And then I'll move on to the Brasso. And the other thing is I just use a soft cloth. Right, so what do we got here? We've got some old undies. I won't use those. Um, oh yeah, that's probably a nice soft cloth. Uh, actually, I'll use that. Right, the general condition of this Bakelite isn't too bad. As I pointed out earlier before, there's a bit of a scuff mark there. Looks like a bit of paint. Um, but if we go round, it's not too bad. No deep scratches. And it's basically just lost its um, shine. Just take our Brasso, give it a bit of a shake. And we're just going to um, apply a bit of it to the cloth. And we're just going to do a little spot check here. Um, maybe just on the top. Now that's a really good shine on that. I'm quite happy with that and it would have shown what this body of this clock looked like back in the day you can see where I've polished and then coming back down to this 
dull area of the clock. Okay, we'll make a start getting this clock body polished up. So we'll just start at the top here and just work our way around the body. And yeah, we'll see if this Brasso takes this paint mark out. Once you've done that, we'll just take a clean cloth and we'll just buff off the uh, bra so that's uh, still on the body of the clock. And that's the end result. That's just using Brasso and I've just done two rotations around the clock. You'll notice here there's a little bit of a deep scuff here. I might try a little bit of the um, Meguiar's polish on that but it's pretty deep so I don't think it'll remove it all but we'll give it a go. Uh, but the rest of the body is in pretty good condition and looking good after that polish. So we are going to use this Meguiar's polish. I'm just going to test it on this deep sort of scratch here. Um, if it doesn't remove it it's not a big deal adds to a bit of character of the clock anyway. Now um, I'm going to apologise here, I am going to use the undies so um, just bear with me. Now this polish is a headlight polish so it um, doesn't need to be that Meguiar's brand. But I'm probably not going to go down too much because it is quite a deep scratch so I don't want to Break the clock. I think that's as uh, good a result we're going to get out of this. Um, but that's a huge improvement um, on what it was prior to polishing. Right guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Quite um, happy with how this clock's turned out with the Brasso, so um, it actually does quite a good job polishing up Bakelite. One thing I forgot to mention though is just watch when you're using a heavier grade polish that you don't actually leave a big scuff mark in the Bakelite itself. I find the Brasso is pretty light on um, Bakelite so it's not a, not a problem. Another thing is this clock will need a master clock to run, so um, this slave clock doesn't have a timepiece in it as such. So it just works off a master clock that sends a signal and it moves the minute hand. I don't have a master clock, but keep an eye out, I might actually see if I can make one or hopefully I can source an old original one. Okay, well thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Get some fun.